how many of you are making some changes in your life? The last time I was here, praise the Lord. And I want to thank you, and I want to thank you for coming this year, and hopefully make your New Year resolution. I'm the modern Noah. Noah has been preaching the flood is coming, the flood is coming, for how many years? 120 years. How many people were saved? Eight. God has endorsed me. God has given me this vision that I'm going to preach and preach for the last 12 months about eating healthy, staying healthy, and I hope many more than eight will be saved. And I have evidence that I know at least 10 of my friends have changed their lifestyle, their habit. Now, this quarter, we are studying stewardship. I wrote this piece almost four months ago on stewardship of our body. I browsed through this whole quarter. Stewardships, talking about tithe, money, material things, but I don't find much about our body. But I find something very close. In the last month of this quarterly, it says here, I want to read. Keep a healthy mind, body, and soul. We originally were created perfect, mentally, physically, and spiritually. Of course, sin has ruined it all. The good news of the gospel, among other things, is that God is in the process of restoring us to what we were meant to be originally. What I'm going to share with you is God has a plan. God has shown me the plan, and I'm going to share with you. God has given me a test in my life, and he has blessed me. And by blessing me, he has worked through me to bless you. Is that good? Good. All right. Okay, I need the, where's the clicker? Oh, okay. Stewardship. God has given each one of us to take good care of a body. Have we done that yet? Now, on my way here yesterday, I stopped by a gas station to buy gas. We all know that we love to go to Costco to buy cheap gas, right? We line up for hours to buy cheap gas. And it hit me suddenly. I said, I buy cheap gas for my car. It's okay. It doesn't matter. Do we buy cheap food for a body? Or do we buy the most excellent food for a body? You heard of the computer language called G-I-G-O, garbage in, garbage out. If you throw garbage in your body, you're going to get garbage out of your body, right? So we must put in the best we can into our body. We read in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, it reads something like that. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostril the breath of life, spirit. And the man became a living soul. Now, our body is just like a shell. Our body is just like a shell, empty shell. As you can see, a picture of the tortoise or turtle there. God breathed breath of life into that shell, and that shell became a living, a living being. And you can see that we have a body, just a shell, an empty shell. God breathed the breath of life into us, and we become start walking, moving, talking. Now, we know that in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7, it's the reverse process. And the dust, when a man dies, a person dies, dust return to the ground it came from. And the spirit, the breath of life, returns to God. And we became an empty shell again. So this shell that was given to you and to me, God says, 
take good care of it. We must take good care of it. We know that in the Bible's parables of the talent, God says the talent that was given to you, you be accountable on the day of judgment day, what do you do to that talent? You be held accountable on the day on judgment day when God says, what do you do to your body that I've given you to take good care of? 1 Corinthians 6, 19, verse 20. Do you, know, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is within you, whom you have received as a gift from God? And that you are not your own. You are, you are not your own property. It's God's property. You were bought with a price. You were actually purchased with the precious blood of Jesus and make his own. So then, honor and glorify God with your body. So we were entrusted with something that's valuable. We all have one life to live. I often hear my friend tell me, we're all going to die eventually. Yes, we're all going to die eventually. But we do not want to die prematurely. Agree? Because the way I can control what I put into my body, but I cannot control when I drive the car on the street, I'm going to hit by a car by other people. I cannot control that. Premature death, like I mentioned the last time, it's a very, very selfish way of going. Because premature death, you die, you lie behind the living to defend for themselves. And you don't want that. And above all, you are robbing God from the opportunity to use you to spread his gospel. God says, I'm not finished with you, but you chose premature death. You have robbed me from giving me a chance to use you to spread his words. A story was told, and I'm going to read to you. I have told this story in 1971. When I was writing this little sermon of mine, this story came to my mind, and I went to the Google and searched for it. I'm going to read, and I cannot find who's the author. The picture here you see was Johnny carry his new boat to the edge of the river, he carefully placed it in the water and slowly let out the string. How smoothly the boat sailed. Johnny sat in the warm sunshine, admiring the little boat that he had built. Suddenly, a strong current caught the boat. Johnny tried to pull it back to shore, but the string broke. The little boat raced downstream. Johnny ran along the sandy shore as fast as he could, but his boat soon slipped out of sight. All afternoon, he searched for the boat. Finally, when it was dark, too dark to look any longer, Johnny sadly went home. A few days later, on the way home from school, Johnny spotted a boat just like his in a store window. When he got closer, he could see it showing up. It is his boat. Johnny hurried to the store, into the store and talked to the manager. Sir, that is my boat in your window. I made it. Storekeeper says, son, sorry, but someone else found it in the morning. If you want it, you have to buy it with $2. Johnny ran home and counted all his monies, exactly $2. When he reached the store, he rushed to the counter. Here's my money. Here's money. I want the boat back. As he left the store, Johnny hugged and said, now, you're twice mine. First, I make you, and now I bought you. First Corinthians chapter 6, 19, verse 20. God sent Jesus Christ down to the earth to die for you and me. He paid a price. So when we come to church every Saturday or once a week, friends, some people think that when they come to church once a week, I got to check out from God. I'm good. You need to behave in whatever you do, you have to be accountable in your, on your physical presence to reflect a true Christian should be. So 
you were bought with a price. God says, I made you once, now I have to pay to buy you back. First, you were bought with a price. Jesus Christ died on the cross so painfully. When we see our Lord Jesus Christ die on the cross, are we want to be a mediocre Christians? Are we all want to commit ourselves totally to God and say, God, you have paid the price for me. I want to be a good example that others can see the love of God in me. August 16, last, uh, six, August 16, 2016, I told the story last time. I, was, I had a heart attack. I was in a mess. I have no idea what happened to me. I was a mess. But God, through that mess, God had given me a message. Found in James chapter 4, verse 17. If anyone then know the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is a sin. God has shown me the way, God has shown me the book, what I must do to stay healthy, to eat healthy. And if I don't follow the instruction, it is a sin to follow them. I was a mess. God gave me a message. And today, God made me his messenger. It is a pleasure for me to, you know, to come here and share with you that Mrs. Wahe wrote, the health reform I was shown is a part of the third angel's message. And it's just as closely connected with it are the arms and hands with the body. God's people are not prepared for the loud cry of this message. Health messages are not often talked about in our churches. We don't hear very often. We hear about the doctrines. We hear about, you know, uh, positive motivation. But if you sit down and take one step backwards, sit down and look at it, how many of us are really serious about a health message? We know the book of Leviticus very well, chapter 11, a clean and unclean. That we have no problem with that. I have no problem with that. But there's subtle law in there that we're not paying attention. There's one particular line found in Leviticus chapter 3, I think verse 11. It says, we must avoid fat and blood. It is the fat that we eat. It's the fat that I eat that make me into a mess. I was a mess. I was given a message. And today, God made me his messenger. 2017, God, for the last seven months in that year, God has given open the road for me to visit 14 different churches saying the same thing. That's why I told you I'm a modern Noah. I will go from places to places telling you that you must eat right, you must follow God's law. Noah waited for 120 years. I hope God will give me 120 years from now. I just did the last 12 months. And today is the first several months I came to share the continuing message or my message God has given me to share with you. Next weekend, I'm going to drive to Fresno. And then God has opened for me to go to the Asian country, to Singapore, Bangkok, Thailand. All this invitation is people have heard my message and they know that I'm going there for vacation. They say, can you please come and share with me? Holiday season, everybody loves to eat. How many of you last Christmas season, if you work, you go to your break room, you see tons of cookies, cakes and all that. I'm going to go to Singapore, and it's Chinese New Year. There's going to be plenty of food. So we just to need to make sure we eat right and not just see anything, just cover it up. Uh, once upon a time, I used to say, anything that moves slower than me is gone. Today, now, anything that moves slower than me, please go faster. Please, please go ahead of me. I'm going to step behind. So I am God's messenger to bring the health message to as many places as possible. This young girl, I think in the early 20s, wrote to me, he says, Uncle Terence, can you come to dinner point to share your personal testimony? My wife and me, we drove all the way from Loma Linda to dinner point 
for just for a family of five, brought my computer, we sat along the beach, and I shared with her you know, my personal story, the health message. And this is what she wrote. Hi, Uncle Terrence. Hope all is well. Chris and I had been conducting Bible studies here in the Philippines. And we just went through the topic of health. We shared your testimony, and the response was amazing. Just wanted to let you know that your testimony, even out here, are reaching others. If you have heard the message, what do you do with the message? Do you just keep it to yourself? Do you just put it on the shelf? Or do you share with others? God is going to use you. If you have been blessed with the message that I gave you, God is going to use you to use the same message to bless other people. No point if you know that Jesus is coming back again and you just keep to yourself. That's selfish. You need to tell the world Jesus is coming. Went to another Chinese church in L.A. This couple, Carmen Wong and Nick Wong, uh, the husband is a bit obese at one time. And he, she wrote back to me, Thanks God that my husband got benefit from Brother Tate's testimony. Three weeks ago, my husband had lost 14 pounds. He eats still cut oatmeal, salad, a lot of fruits, beans since then. Everyone that I talk to, I always tell them eat still cut, and everybody starts eating still cut. I'm not promoting sprouts or other, but still cut is the best. So it's very satisfying for me to see that the message I share and people take it to heart and do something good for themselves. I have this friend of mine, she went to school with me in 1969 in Bangkok, Thailand. She took nursing and she lived in Wichita, Wichita Kansas. She saw my posting of all kinds of food I, I'm eating and what I'm doing every day, my kind of exercise. And she wrote, I walk a mile. I'm starting small, walking towards two, two miles a day. Then I'll be having my still cut old meals, blueberries, banana breakfast. And you can see that everybody wrote to me, they all still cut blueberries, everything. So she's trying. Last one. This is a good friend of uh, ours, my, friend, uh, my wife and me. Uh, she wrote back to me, Definitely, you are always in my prayer. I asked my friend to please pray for me that the Holy Spirit will follow me to share this message. And she wrote, Definitely, you are always in my prayer. God has been with you all this time. What you went through had turned out blessing others, including me. I've started Street Vegan since October 2017. There was a time when it was not easy, but now it's a piece of cake. So, brother, God bless you, and you work as you work in his vineyard, I will see you at the west side of the tree of life. That's the reason that why she wrote the last line. Because when I shared with this friend of ours, I said, you need to go back to God's original plan, the, plan, the plant-based diet. She did. She had diabetes. She was a diabetic patient. And today, she had told us that she off medication and the blood sugars is normal. But she was struck with another illness. Just in around October, she was diagnosed with lung cancer. But her spirit was so high, her spirit was so positive that she says she's going to challenge the evil of cancer and she's going to make it. And that's what she wrote to me. She said, if I don't see you, if she die, she will see us the west side of the tree of life. What a positive attitude is that? I was destroying my body, my reckless eating of unhealthy food. I love oily stuff. When, when I look back at my life, when I saw the kind of food I'm eating, saw the kind of, kind of physical that I have, I remind myself of Paul. We know the story of Paul. Paul went out to persecute Christians. We know Paul went out to destroy churches. I'm no different than Paul. I'm just like Paul. Why is that so? By the kind of food I'm eating, I'm destroying the living cells in my body. Living cells in the body. And I'm just destroying the temple of God. Remember 1 Corinthians? Our body is a temple of God. We need to take good care of the temple. 
So the reason I was eating this kind of food because I was so ignorant. I have no clue. I thought I'm, I was doing okay. I know what is clean, what is unclean. But I do not know the final detail that I need to avoid fat. I need to avoid sh sugar. I need to avoid salt. Now, fat does not come in the fat that you see. Fat comes in a lot of disguise. When you eat a vegetarian pizza, that is not vegetarian at all. There's a lot of cheese in there. So anytime, now when I look at food, my question I ask, how much fat is in there? How much sugar is in there? How much salt is in there? We need, because Mr. Sawai says we are so ignorant. And the only way to learn from it is we need to read what the Bible says, what Mrs. White talks about health, and we need to read books from other experts to give us more light. I have read so many books by different doctors. The first time, the first time when I read those books is for me to find out what I need to eat right. Now, I'm entering my second year. Now, when I'm reading the book, I'm reading to understand why I'm eating the right kind of food. Give me more explanation. So, I was destroying my body by reckless eating unhealthy food. Mrs. White wrote, It is wrong to eat merely to gratify our appetite. If the food eaten is not relish, the body will not be so well nourished. The food should be chosen carefully and prepared with intelligence and skill. When I go on cruises, I love to go cruises a lot. And I love to sit at the buffet and watch people eat. And when I watch the way they eat and I reflect on myself, I used to eat the same way like them. I just put the food in my mouth without thinking. Without thinking. And their plate is so loaded. But today, I follow Mrs. White counsel. The food should be cho carefully chosen. And the question I always ask myself, how much fat, how much sugar, how much salt? She said, it is wrong to merely gratify appetite. We just, as I said before, most of the time when we eat something, it's all about taste. Does it taste good or not? If it's no good, I'm not going to eat. But the food that goes through your tip of your tongue to the back of your tongue, that's all about taste. After when you pass over the, after the tongue, your body has no clue what you just put in. Whether it heals you or it destroys you. I decided to become a vegetarian overnight. Unhealthy conditions should be changed. Wrong habit corrected. And I follow Mrs. White counsel. And today, you can see that my body has transformed. God took care of it. I eat what I need to eat to follow God's instruction, and God took care of the rest. And I always tell everybody, the side effect of being a vegetarian is losing weight. That's a good side effect, losing weight. And on thought of that, you don't have to exercise. I don't mean that you don't have to exercise. You don't have to go to the gym to do palate or what kind of, what kind of tea. You just lose weight. God has given us this guideline in the Bible. Genesis chapter 1, verse 29. You can see that verse up to it. Mrs. White wrote this in the midst of healing. These are the eight principles we need to follow. And most Adventists know these eight principles very well. But do we follow them? Pure air, sunlight, temperance, rest, exercise, nutrition, water, trust in divine power. These are the true remedy. Every person should have a knowledge of nature, remedial agency, and how to apply them. And from this guideline, an organization came up. They call it the New Start Program. And there's a lot of other agencies try to follow. They come up with a lot of acronym, creation, you know, various. They, they, and to me, I say, it's no point for me to come up my own why reinvent if there's someone is some word is used and is well, well, and this new start program is not only in states it's all over the world, and uh, you find that the organization is in 
somewhere where the real mine in some, somewhere near, not too far, Sacramento. So what I'm going to share with you, a little bit of new start, but I want to focus a lot on nutrition. But whatever we do, whatever we choose to do, the most important thing that we must first in our life acknowledge God. Without God, it's not possible. All my success that I have in my life is not on my own doing. God is my partner. He works with me. Don't give up. Many times when someone says, I want to change, when I tell them you've got to do this, this, wow, that is so difficult to do. You haven't started, you already say it's difficult. But again, if you have God on your side, it can be done. Acknowledge God. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6. It reads, In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will lead your path straight. Acknowledge God. When people that I know that are successful, that do not acknowledge God, if you read their writing, there's one, one character that stands out a lot. They use the word I a lot. I do this, I do this, I do this. But they forget that how did, how did they get to do this? God gave them the will. God gave him the wisdom to do that. So acknowledge God is important. Nutrition. You have the power with every bite you take to stand up for the health and the life that you want. You have the choice. You have the power. I'm going to come back and talk a little bit more about this. Exercise. Hippocrates said, walking is man's best medicine. Jesus Christ, when he was on earth, Jesus Christ, when he was on earth for his ministry, three and a half years, he did not, he did not ride donkeys, horses. He walks. The only time Jesus Christ rode a donkey when he came to Jerusalem triumphant as a king of kings. Other than that, he spent a lot of time walking. So we should not be complaining if we have to walk a little bit further. Now, when I do grocery with my wife, I love to park my car the furthest. And say, wow, I got to walk all the way there? But now what I do is I drop her the front, day, front door, let her go to grocery, then I park all the way there, then I walk. Then when we come up for grocery, I walk all the way to bring my car, to bring her up, pick her up back. Walking is the best form of exercise. And how, how many steps do we need to walk a day? Anybody knows? Huh? 10,000 steps. You need to walk at least 10,000 steps. Now, I, I walk at least 10,000 steps to 12,000 because I get paid by my employer. For every 7,500 steps I walk, I get $2. That motivates me to walk. So walking is the best for my because walking is not a high-intensive exercise. People who love to run do, or jog, what is happening that when you run and jog, you're pounding your feet on the ground and your knee are just pounding. If you're young, that's okay. If you're young, that's okay. But it will catch up with you when you're 50, 60, and 70. So walking as much as you can. Water. Where there's water, there's life. Our body is 60% water. Our ocean is 60% water. Water is important in our system. Water that we drink cleans our body, that remove the toxin in our system, and it was so well designed that God has given us a very good plumbing system that we filter the bad stuff and then we dispose it through a kick. So water is essential in our life. How much water do we need to drink? At least eight glasses. Eight times eight. Eight glasses, eight ounces of water. But you actually, you do not need to drink more than eight because the food that you eat, vegetables, fruits, they do have water too. But how do you know whether you're drinking enough water? Hmm? The way for me is when I go to the bathroom, I look at my urine, what's the color? If more yellow means I'm not drinking enough. I don't have to go for any test, just look at it. And, and, and how do you know you have diabetes? Go and find a tree that's a lot of ants and you pee on it. If the ants go crowd around your urine, 
Yes, your urine is too sweet. You don't have to do bad. I mean, this is primitive way of doing it. You don't have to, you know. But again, as long as you drink enough water, that will take good care. And also, we need to take water. We need to take shower to cleanse our exterior of body. Sunlight is important. You want to take enough sunlight to get vitamin D, but you do not want to have excessive sunlight to cause skin cancer. Sunlight was created for a reason. People who have illness, they are recommended that you need to go out and expose yourself to sun. Sun kills bacteria. I worked in the microbiology department for 40 years, and we need to have enough sunlight to take good care of us. People who have TB, when I used to work in the uh, Bangkok Adventist Hospital, patient who has exposed to TB, every now and then the nurses will wheel them out to the deck to then expose to the sun. Sunlight. Temperance. Eating well is a form of self-respect. Now, when we think of temperance, we always think about smoking, drugs. I think we forget about temperance. Eating, diet is a form of temperance. Are we indulged in the food that we love so much that we eat so much indulged and without thinking about it? Now, Satan knows our downfall. Satan knows my downfall. He knows I love to eat. And he says, it's okay to eat. But you have to eat the right kind of food. Satan knows that human mankind are very vulnerable to food. Adam and Eve, when they committed sin, what is the first thing they committed to? Food. Right? God told Adam, of all trees you can eat except this one, don't eat. Food. When Jesus Christ was baptized, when he rose from the water, he went into the wilderness, what was he tempted for? Food. Satan says, if you are the son of God, convert this stone into bread. And what did Jesus reply to Satan? It is written. <clears throat> now, when you are tempted, are you able to quote Bible verses and say, it is written? Where did, where did Jesus quote the verse, it is written? Deuteronomy. God, in those days, there was no Bible, there's no hard copy. But Jesus know where to find that verse. Now, not only Jesus know it is written, Satan also know it is written. Jesus, I mean, Satan read, read the Bible too. So we need to be able, for every verse that Satan threw at us, we should be able to... Rep and how do you know your Bible verses, it is written? How do you know that? You have to read it. Right? How many of you bring your Bible to church today? Okay. How many of you use cell phone as your Bible? Throw that away. Why did I say that? Throw that away. I use electronic Bible for searching Bible texts as quickly as I want. The reason I say that you should not use electronic equipment as your Bible because Satan knows that you're going to use it. Satan is going to distract you. When you are searching for Bible, how often do you have a temptation to look at your text, messages? How often do you have temptation to read your emails? How often do you have temptation to read your Facebook? Satan knows our weakness. So please, don't use electronic as a device to search for Bible text. If you run out of battery, how are you going to quote? Oh, I can't find that verse. You must have a hard copy to read. Martin Luther sacrificed his life to translate original Bible German. People die to have the Bible. And today, we are so fortunate that we do not take the Bible seriously. Now, how many of you have more than one Bible? Two. Three. Very good. Four. Good. Very good. I have about 12 Bibles in my They are of different versions. When I read my Bible, I read a verse I don't understand. I went to the easier understanding version. Of course, King James is out of my limit. 
you know. But some Kim James version, the verse was written very, very nice. I like to use quotation. But I need other version to help me, to have a better understanding. But when you study your, when you study your quarterly, when you search the Bible text, and if you don't understand the text, go and find another Bible to explain, to elaborate what's going on. So temperance is very important because God knows that Satan is going to tempt us, and Satan knows that is our weakness. Air. Air is, air is just like water. It's very important in our life. We breathe air in the morning to absorb oxygen into our body system. Now, I cannot understand people who believe in evolution where we just, one day we just show up at your doorstep. Air is so well designed that God has given you and me into a body. Let me explain to you why. Our body, we have red blood cells, right? Red blood cells. How many of you know how many red blood cells you should have in your body? A normal person. A normal person, you should have 5 million red blood cells circulating in your system. 5, red blood, five million. And out of 5 million, the size of your red blood cells, because I look under a microscope all the time, the size of your red blood cells should be 7 micron. 7 microns, 5 million. But for me, I have 7 million red blood cells. That doesn't mean I'm good. God gave me more red blood cells. Because my red blood cells, instead of 7 microns to be normal, my red blood cells is only 5 microns, smaller. So my body compensates in order to carry the same amount of oxygen through my system. God gave me 7 million. Normal person will have 5 million, 7 micron. I have 7 million, 5 micron. And when I look at those two numbers, the magical number is we must have at least 35. Follow me so far? 35. And our body system is so well made. The only person that can do that kind of stuff is our God. We do not come from a lizard that can make these kind of things. You know, God Design you and design me with a purpose, and he knows how to do it. Rest. Plenty of rest. God created the world in seven, uh, six days, and he rested on the seventh day. And he blessed it. God gave us the Ten Commandments, remember the Sabbath day, to keep your, and he said, we need to rest. And so we need to rest at night. We need to rest at least, sleep at least eight hours. Because sleeping eight hours our body will heal itself. When we sleep, our body is actually working. It's healing itself. There's a little people in our system that will start, start healing the lining of our arteries. It heals that we need to have enough rest. Some people work two jobs, three jobs. That's not a way to go. So you must make sure that you rest. Last, trust in God. Always, I always come back to this versus problem. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust Him 100%, not 50%, 60%. Totally. Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Don't give all kinds of excuses. Don't give all kinds of explanation. Just trust Him. And in all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will guide you. I have many stories to tell you how God led my way. You know. So trust in the divine power. I'm going to go quickly. So the question is, how am I going to eat? What do I need to eat? God gave us the answer in Genesis chapter 1, verse 29. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth, and every tree that has fruit with seeds in it, they will be yours for food. Green, vegetables, berry, onion, mushroom, beans, and seeds. What do all these six items have in common? They have fiber. Fiber is the most in, important ingredient you must have in your diet. And Dr. Furman, out of the fiber that he, he discovered, he came up with these six items. And if you follow your diet, plant-based diet, include this, uh, God promised you and promised me in Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, that he will heal you. 
He will heal you. So what are the things that I'm not supposed to eat? Plant-based diet excludes fat, salt, and sugar. Red meat, chicken, fish, oil, dairy product, cheese, eggs, and processed products. The chart says the standard American diet, those fast food, 54% are eating processed food. Processed food is the culprit of our illness in our life. What is processed food? Processed food are those that you buy, come in a box, and those have the label. And animal products, how much is animal product? 32%. Vegetable, 11%. Even the vegetable that we eat, 11%, contain fat. Why is that so? How many of you go to McDonald's and say, I'm a vegetarian, I love french fries. I go to Pizza Hut, I order vegetarian pizza. Those are all contain fat. So even this 11%, they're all not true vegetarian. So this is called a sad American diet. And when we follow this kind of diet, disease is going to follow us. We are not eating enough proteins. No, we are eating the, 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 the daily recommendation of protein is 50 milligrams, 50 grams, but we're eating double. We're not eating enough fiber. We need to eat 30 grams, we only eat 15. So God's plan is that you need to have fiber in your system. Mrs. White wrote, many transgress the law of health through ignorance. We are, I'm so ignorant about food. A year and a half ago, you talked to me about food, I have no clue. I will tell you what I love to eat. But through my reading and the instruction that God has guided me, I was amazed how he transformed me. We need to learn how to read nutrition labels. That is a must. Veginase. How many of you have heard of mayonnaise, right? And when they came up with veginase, a lot of vegetarian ran after that. Read the labels to point out. One tablespoon of veginase is 90 calories, and the fat content is 80 calories. You just gobble fat, that's it. They just spice it up with something that make it taste good. You are actually eating fat. Matthew chapter 24, Jesus says, be careful. You will be deceived in the last day. Jesus Christ is going to come back, and Satan is going to camouflage that. It looks like Christ is coming. Same thing with food. Food industry knows what you love, and it says, vegetarian, egg-free, gluten-free, better than mayo. That's a deceiving, so be careful. What? Andamami spaghetti. Fiber is 12 grams, 49%. Read the label, it's very important. Friend, so whether you eat or drink, or whatever you want to do, the body that was given to you is a shell that you need to take good care of it. Do it all for the glory of God. You only have one life to live. Make the life meaningful. Go out and share with others what you have heard. People who are not healthy enough you cannot blame anything on anyone else except you blame yourself. Yourself. I, I mean, when I used to be obese, I was trying so hard how to lose my weight. I do not know how to do it. I only blame myself. So God gave me a test. He gave me to go through, have a heart attack, and through that, I learned a lot. I need to eat healthy. And today, I can share with you that if you follow God's word, words and his instruction, he promised you and me, he will take care of you and he will heal you. So how many, how many of you want to make this? I'm going to challenge you. How many of you want to take this New Year resolution that you want to start eating healthy and everything that you eat, you think before you eat, before you just take the food and put it into your mouth? Can I see your hand? Good. I'm not judging you. God is watching over you. So make a commitment to him, okay? And you will be pleased and happy 
that you see good results. Thank you very much. Let, shall I pray? Okay, let's pray. Our kind dear Holy Father, we want to thank you for the Sabbath. Lord, you have opened our eyes to see what and how we need to do to eat right so that we can live longer to share the love of Jesus Christ to others. Lord, we want to thank you for the blueprint that you've given us. And please give us the strength and the energy that we need to do what is right in your eyes. Forgive our mistakes that we make. Lord, sometimes we try to do good and we fall. Please send your angel to lift us back up. That we want to do whatever is right that we want to see with our own eyes when Jesus Christ returns in the clouds of heaven. Dismiss us from this place. Bring us back again that we can come to church to sing praises to your name and to say thank you, Lord, for loving each one of us as who we are. For I ask all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.